Hello Space Cats and welcome back to my channel. This week astronomers have discovered a new planet that shouldn't really exist. In this week's video I'm going to be talking about GJ3512b and its host star GJ3512 that are making astronomers question how planets really form. So let's jump right into it. Exoplanets are planets that are outside of our solar system and they're quite difficult to find because they're typically hidden behind the brightness of their host stars. But today we found about almost 4,000 exoplanets with about 10% of these orbiting around low mass stars. In today's study, which I'll link the paper down below, scientists are using the Carmenes Exoplanet Survey to search for exoplanets orbiting around M-type red dwarf stars. And these are some of the smallest but also coolest stars in our universe. They're also some of the most common in our own galaxy. They're using the Calar Alto Telescope in southern Spain and employing the radial velocity method in their exoplanet search. The radial velocity method is not so dissimilar to the Doppler effect, where you have a police car siren passing you by, for example. When that police siren approaches you, the sound wave gets compressed, and so you hear a high-pitched sound. But when the police car moves away from you, that siren gets stretched out, the sound wave of that siren gets stretched out, and so it appears like a low-pitched sound. In exoplanets, however, what happens is that the exoplanet orbiting the star will have a gravitational pull on the star, and this makes it wobble. When we observe the light of the star emitted across all different wavelengths, what we see is the spectra. And we also see spectral lines that correspond to absorption and emission of different elements present in the star. When this star is wobbling due to the gravitational tug of the exoplanet, when it moves away from us, the light from the star is stretched out. So the spectral lines will move towards the redder end of the spectrum. And as the star moves towards us during the wobbling phase, the light will be compressed and so the spectral lines will move towards the bluer end of the spectrum. This kind of pattern is exactly what the scientists saw when they looked at the star GJ3512. So they knew that it had to have a companion exoplanet. When the scientists plotted the radial velocity curve as a function of time, this is what they found. And using models to fit this, they can infer about the properties of the exoplanet. So for GJ3512b, what they found was that the exoplanet was a gas giant planet, just like Jupiter and Saturn is, but it has an orbital period of 204 days. So it's orbiting around its star every 204 days in an elliptical orbit. What's strange though, is not that this star is smaller than the exoplanet, but that the exoplanet is so large, it's 10 times larger than anything we would expect to form around such a small star. So it couldn't have formed using the standard planetary formation models. Current models for planetary formation favor the core accretion model. And this states that planets form and grow by accreting gas and dust from a disk of material surrounding newly formed stars. Simulations based on these models are able to accurately reproduce planets that surround stars like our own. However, it's more difficult to reproduce planets that are as large as this one that they found or its host star being so small because there just wouldn't be enough material in the disk for it to grow as large as it has. Instead, the scientists working on this project believe that this planet formed by a gravitational instability that was caused when the disk fragmented and collapsed under its own gravity. GJ3512b is not the largest exoplanet that we've ever found orbiting a very small star but it is the first that we've found using the radial velocity method. In this plot, you can see the mass of exoplanets versus the mass of their host stars. 
GJ3512B is shown as the star. And as you can see, there's a couple of objects on that plot that have even higher masses with a very small, very low mass host stars. These objects are found, however, using the microlensing method. So microlensing is where you have this exoplanet host star system that acts as a lens as it moves in front of a background faraway star. And this lensing effect magnifies its brightness. So when it moves across, you see a brightness enhancement in the background star, but also an additional light like, blip, an additional peak due to the presence of an exoplanet. So typically exoplanets that are discovered using the microlensing method are very, very far away from their host star. So they're consistent with exoplanetary formation models, whereas GJ3512b is extremely close to its host star. In fact, it's about the distance of Mercury is to our own sun in its uh, host star planetary system. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. Do you think we'll find any more objects just like this one? And let me know in the comments section below what topic you want me to talk about next. In the meanwhile, I'll put in the description box below some extra reading material for you. And as usual, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe.